my name's Jack and this is Life in Motion. Now, I appear to have done something rather silly. I bought a seven-seater V8-powered family SUV. And to clarify, I'm single, I have no kids and no need for said seven-seater. However, scratch below the surface and this Audi SQ7 starts to make a bit of sense. I'm gonna explain why. So maybe wanting to live my Christian Grey, my Iron Man fantasy, I wanted a car with those four rings. A couple of reasons why. Number one, I used to work for Audi. It's my first job way back in the day when I left college. So I've always wanted and loved Audis. Probably the R8 was the one that I wanted. Back in the day, I saw like an R8 V8 manual. It was in Audi and Camberley and it was on the plinth and I just was obsessed with it. So I was, from that day on, loved Audi. Second thing, Look at this car. Navara Blue is one of my favorite blues in the Audi lineup. It pops in the sun, looks more subtle in the shade. I love it. This is a Vorsprung, so you got these massive 22 inch wheels. I love them, they look great. Also, you got black packs, you've got different interiors, comes with lots of different options. This has got basically every option apart from a bigger fuel tank, maybe. Other than that, it's got everything. Now, don't get me wrong, the first generation Q7, I didn't really like, not for me. The second one I did, and this one I absolutely love. First time I got an Audi SQ7, I was a passenger when I was working at Audi. I just loved it. It was a V8 diesel, which is what the original one was. Oh my God, what a car that was. You've got the distinctive grille at the front. This is a blacked out because it's got a Vorsprung pack. You've got the little Audi SQ7 badge as well. It's got 360 cameras, of course, and it's an aggressive start. So you can see these massive grills in there. It's got laser light technology. First of all, they do a little dance when you open and close. It's really cool. Second of all, when you were driving at night and you've got the beam on, it's an automatic beam, so it'll turn on and off when people are coming towards you and when they go away. But also, it has like almost like a letterbox in, in my mind, right? So when you're coming along, if something's in, that, in, in the way that's coming towards you, you need to turn the beam off, it will only individually select one part of the beam to go off. When they've passed, it will go on again, or road signs or anything. It's, it's amazing. It means you can have your beam on pretty much 90% of it all the time, and then just individually sets off it's brilliant, really, really good if you do a lot of night driving. Now, if you know the SQ7 from the first generation, or you know the first generation SQ5, which I test drove on the channel, I absolutely bloody loved it. I'll put a link in the description. It's one of the best cars I've ever driven. You'll know that they were diesel. Now, they do make this car in a petrol, the new one, but I bought a diesel. It's, it's got a 48 volt mile hybrid system but it's a four litre V8 bi-turbo diesel with 429 brake horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. It's two and a half tons. It doesn't need a lot of power. And my God, does it shift. Besides the Navara Blue, you've obviously got the black pack with this wheel sprung, black along here with the Quattro badge, black on the windows, privacy glass, black wind mirror caps. Previous cars, they used to have silver wind mirror caps back in the first generation SQ7, and you should have seen lots of S and RS products with the silver caps. They've now gone black, and you can get standard Q7s with black packs, so they can kind of blend in a little bit, but I think it still looks great. Massive wheels, but I'm hoping Regardless of anything, you'll see how low this car is. This is set up in dynamic mode, which means that the car lowers down to its lowest setting because it's got air suspension. One of the big points is why I wanted this car, for comfort, but also because look, just, just look how good it looks. And then when we get to the back, this might actually be my favorite angle of the car. I've not decided yet because you've got these four tailpipes which on the first generation sq7 were square now they've gone round like a lot of the different s products you've got i think they look great you've got a silver band now just so you know this is a 2020 plate car so this vorsprung edition has black pack around the windows the sides the grill at the front but the badge at the front the badge at the back and this strip are silver on the new generation sq7 you'll see today like the facelifted version all of that will be black, but these will also be black as well. So this is kind of how you can tell this is a slightly older car. And then while we're here, obviously it's a massive boot. It's a seven seater in this configuration. I've got the two seats in the back, which I've never used, because again, I have no 
family, but there are buttons in here you can press. Actually, as well, I can press this button, and lo and behold, nothing happens. There we go, press it again. There's a tow bar in this car. I said the Vorsprung literally comes with everything, and this car has got the full works. It's got a tow bar, this button here, if you press that, the car will lower down. You can see it lowering. So if our dog's getting in, or a dog's getting out, and it's getting a little bit tired and old, that's really useful, so I use that as well with my dog. But yeah, I think all in all, it's just a flipping awesome car. What do we think of the outside of my SQ7? Let me run you through inside because it's good news. Virtual cockpit, we all know Audi nailed a virtual cockpit. They've done it again in this car. It looks outstanding. We've got different views we can go through. So we've got this, I'm in the dynamic view at the moment, which gives you this little kind of weird, uh, kind of the S look. I mean, it's up to you. You can change it to the dials as well, which can be done in the infotainment system, which is in the middle here. It's actually really easy to use. It moves around very nice and easily. It's uses, it's haptic feedback. It's not buttons, it's haptic. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it smudges so easily. And I was like, well, it's, it's okay. I never really think it's that bad. But regardless, I love it. Everything in here, by the way, is like leather or Alcantara. I love a bit of Alcantara. So all of the headlining, all of the sun visors, everything that you touch here is Alcantara. The, full, the seats are obviously full leather. They're the quilted Valcona leather, I think they're called. They're kind of like diamond stitching. And obviously you can see they've got this like perforated bit because obviously that's where the air comes from. They're obviously heated as well, by the way. They are one of the coolest seats I've ever had in my life. They are ventilated. They are heated. They are electric, of course. They're memory seats and they're massaging seats. I press this little button down here in the middle of where it does, and up here pops the massage setting. Then I can go through it. I can go through wave, pulse, stretch, rest, shoulder, activation, revitalization. No idea what any of them mean, but I think they just kind of move around. But revitalization is my favorite one. I can choose the intensity. I can stop it. I can start it. But also in here, while I'm just kind of on this page, I can choose how high or low or where my seat temperature is on the balance so I can have a warmer bum or I can have a warmer back, cooler bum, cooler back. I can also stretch over here and I can choose to extend the lumbar support here or I can squeeze myself with these or I can let them release being nice and casual. They are a nice seat, they're more sporty. Take a Range Rover, they're like a armchair. These are far more sporty but they're still very, very comfortable. I love Audi's feeling how everything is. Everything in here is lovely. Perforated leather on the gear selector, the steering wheel, all this dash is lovely in leather. The wraparound ventilation, which looks great. You've got Bose surround sound system. It's brilliant. I've got this kind of wood effect in my car, um, which is okay. I would have preferred to be carbon, but there was an option, I think, but this is absolutely fine. But, oh, it's just a joyous place to be. Below that, you've got your climate control. So I can take, well, A, I can do start, stop. I'd actually turn the screen off if I wanted to. If it's like at night, it's a bit glary, there's people in the car, you can turn that off so it's not as, not as bright. Um, but below here, you've got different things like controlled hill descent if you want to. You can move around different bits. You can have a little favorites if you want to as well. Otherwise, you've got your climate control, which gives you things like obviously how what you want the temperature to be. There's in the back, in the front. Oh, in the back, by the way, you've got climate control and heated seats, which is unbelievable and USB charging points as well, or USB-C. Heated seats, ventilated seats, you've got all your different buttons here for things like max ventilation, you've got your ESC off and things. You've got drive select. Now drive select is Audi's effectively like sporty buttons. And you can press them, press them, and they come up here. So there's Audi drive select. Now there's lots of different modes to choose from. Because this is an SUV and it's got the air suspension, you can do things like off-road mode, which will get, raise the car as high it will go. All-road mode, which is a little bit slightly different. You've got efficiency. Naturally, what it says, it will drive as efficient as possible. Comfort, everything's super soft. Steering is light. It just flows down the road. Auto, I never really use auto, but again, it does it, it says on the tin. It will run out to what you're doing. Dynamic, ah, it's gone away. Dynamic which lowers the car all the way down, which is how I've had it in this video so far. So that's when it's at its lower setting, that's what it looks like. And I have individual, which I use, and I can press here, you can choose what you wanna do, how it drives, the suspension, steering. Effectively, for me, 
I want everything as comfortable as possible, but I want the engine sound to be nice and loud because I'm a yob. So yes, drive select, that's how it works. It's really good because it's got air suspension, obviously you notice a lot more. Um, the brakes are obviously very good as well. I say that because the car is very heavy, two and a half tons. The suspension feels good, but you obviously need to do brakes for it because it's got a lot of power. In the middle, I, can, I put my keys in. There's a little slot to put your keys in. You've got a 12 volt socket and you've got cup holders. This is the gear stick here. And in there you've got wireless charging and USB ports for your phones. Now, one thing while I'm jumping in the back, this car has sloth closure doors. Let me just show you, ready? Click this and then, ah, oh, I've never think it's such a most pointless thing in the world. I mean, is it for a chauffeur when they let someone into the car, they, there you are, madam, you take a seat and they close the door. Is it so he doesn't, sl oh, I don't know. It's such a pointless, pointless feature. But anyway, in the back, somewhere I never sit. Now I'm about 5'10", so I'm not that tall, but I guess I'm pretty much average. And I have so much leg room in this car. One of the memories I have when I was back at Audi was getting into my boss's Q7 at the time, sitting in the back and thinking, oh my God, there's just so much room. It's so comfortable. I never sit in the back, but I have had very good reviews from friends. Now, these seats that I'm in at the moment, they do recline, so you can recline all the way back. You can't see me, but I am reclining back as well. And they slide forwards and backwards. So if you have someone in the back, that is all the way forward and still I have plenty of space like my knees aren't you know too tight but you can do that if you want to so don't worry you can get lots of space in the back again I've never used those back seats but you know people will uh, net obviously in the middle I mentioned you've got climate control and there's USB C's down there heated seats you can control your climate from the back but also the driver can control everything if they want to lovely sunroof Full panoramic, opens and closes, and it's got a blind as well. So if it's too hot like today, you can close that blind. And you know, if you've got kids or anything like that, they don't get too hot. Alcantara continues throughout, which is a big bonus for me. So inside, it's massive, it's comfortable, and it's so gorgeous. But yes, it's all winning in here. And so it's probably time to jump in and go for a drive and see how bloody fast this SQ7 is. So let's go do it. The Audi SQ7 on the drive. What do we think? Well, right now I am set up in dynamic mode, which means the car is lower, the car is more torque, the throttle response is quicker, the gearbox is in sport, and everything just feels a... Jeez, a little bit more sharp. My God, this shifts so much. Just the sheer weight of this car, you just feel like you're moving a moon. It's just so quick. Right, we're gonna put the foot down now. Go because it's a diesel. There's a lot of torque. It only revs to five thousand RPM. Being that it's a diesel, it's not surprising. But ah, oh, just feels so good. Now the car does when it every so often drop out of gear. Now that is, I think, an efficiency thing. Even in dynamic, it will just come out of gear. Sometimes it can be a bit annoying. If you're off the throttle, then you want to go back on it. It can be a little bit frustrating. Like when you follow a truck. Oh, I was so ready to just floor the pants off this car. And now I'm following an articulated lorry. God, I hate lorries. But you know what? There is one benefit to driving behind a lorry, and that is you can put the SQ7 into comfort mode and then relax. The car becomes a Q7, it becomes tame, it becomes comfortable and quiet and refined. The glass keeps a lot of the sound out. There's not a lot of wind noise at all, even though it's got massive mirrors and huge wheels. The steering becomes light and supple. It feels like you're playing a, a harp or a cello. The seats relax, they don't squeeze you, they, they ease you in, they feel like they're an old friend, you're going for a hug. And enough of the analogies, it's bloody comfortable. 
the air suspension, which you'll see is just kind of rosing up a little bit, just give that a little bit more cushion, and it just soaks up the bumps. Yes, the tires, are, the wheels are massive, so it's not gonna be that good, but given that, and they, they look bloody good, so I'm gonna keep them like that, it's so comfortable. Not a Range Rover, but it's brilliant. Right, the truck has gone, which means pressing the drive select button into dynamic. And if I press my memory seat to two, I've set it up so the car, the seat will start to squeeze me. I wanna be in the most sporty setting I can. All the bolsters are coming in, the side and the side here, the side down there. Right, they're squeezing me. I'm gonna go into manual mode. Right, are you ready? Let's go. Oh my God. Whoa. Right, on the brakes. The brakes are very good. They're massive, which so they need to be very good because you are trying to stop a two and a half ton car. Go, 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 go. See, now the car does, it changed then for me, which is a little bit annoying, but who's driving it like this all the time? Probably no one. Oh, and it sounds good. It's a diesel and it sounds like a big B8 because it is a big B8. Oh, it gets quick. You don't realize how much speed it is picking up. As you are flying, right, go, 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 go. Oh, my God. It's like driving a building and it's so quick. Okay, yes, 4.8 seconds to 62 is not that quick by today's standard, but this just feels blistering. Absolutely blistering. Right, so if you are new to the channel, around about now, I turn around here in this little laid by the lovely field and I pull up and we do a little north to 60 just to see how it feels so I don't think anyone's coming perfect right 429 brake horsepower 900 meters of diesel torque north 62 in 4.8 seconds left foot brake hard on the brake right foot flat build the boost max boost <laughs> It's quick, it's quick, it's quick, it's quick. And 60. Blah! Oh my God, it's quick. It's very quick. It's funny, the whole car just kind of lifts up. It like levitates at the front. Obviously, it's a lot of weight and shooting back. But, oh, and the Quattro all-wheel drive just, just puts that power down so well. Now, the SQ7 has got rear-wheel steering. And I've got a bugbear with it. When you are doing what I just did, standing straight foot to the floor is brilliant can't fault it at all you pull out of a junction or off a roundabout with a slight angle and i think the rear wheel steer is kind of grabbing and it doesn't want to give you all that power until you're kind of straight and i just it really frustrates me change down go i think the pickup could be oh, jesus blimmin hell I think the pickup could be a little bit quicker. Sometimes you put your foot down and I thought the 48 volt battery, the kind of mild hybrid bit, would kind of give you that little bit extra kind of bump, but it doesn't seem to do it that much. But it is very good. The torque is obviously there. It pull, it, you can see that so much pull. You don't have to rev it out. You pull, pull, pull. And it is brilliant. Steering feels good. In dynamic, it gets a little bit harder. Um, and like the SQ5 I drove a little while ago, it has that same feel. The faster you go, just the more positive the steering feels it just wants you just eager to go on and on and on now when we're around town like i am now doing 30 miles an hour first of all adaptive cruise control follows the car in front nothing special there you can change the distance all that kind of jazz the cool thing though is it has an advanced level of cruise control for example if i am navigating to somewhere caffeine and machine a favorite car cafe with very cool coffee and lots of nice cars. But I'm going there, an hour and a half driving. Uh, the cruise control can view the road ahead, understand what's coming up, roundabout sharp corners, and it will actually start to ease off, slow down before something comes towards you. So if you are the height of luxury and laziness, this car will basically drive you itself. It's absolutely bloody brilliant. Now around town, it is quite big. The SQ7 is about the size of Hampshire, and if you don't know what Hampshire is, it's about half the length of a London bus. It's about five meters, this car, which is pretty long. It's pretty wide too, and it weighs two and a half tons. So it can, every so often, feel a little bit big. Now let's get on to something which you'll all probably be wondering, and that is cost. 
Now this car is a 2020 plate, so it's what, four years old? It had 22,000 miles on it when I bought it, and it cost me 64 and a half thousand pounds. Four years before that, however, at zero miles, when this car was brand new, it cost the owner 98,000 pounds. And if you buy a new Vorsprung SQ7, which is this, the Vorsprung, today, it's gonna cost you around 110,000 pounds, and then you can add some options on, like a bigger fuel tank and things, but over 100,000 pounds, that's a lot of money. That is new shape Range Rover money for a Audi SQ7. I know it's a brilliant car, it's fantastically quick, it's comfortable, but it is a big price tag. Not if you look at things like an RS Q8 or an RS6, they are more expensive. And an, and an Audi, a, a Porsche Cayenne, for example, with the same engine, same performance, same spec, specification, would be well over, what, 140,000 pounds. So value for money, this compared to a Cayenne, which I drove, and a Range Rover with all the options on, the sunroof, the soft clothes, the massaging seats, ventilated seats, adaptive cruise, everything, this is actually a really good bargain. It's value for money. By saying that, I'm not trying to be insensitive to the fact that this is a bloody lot of money, and even at 64 and a half thousand pounds, which I paid for it via finance, yeah, it's a lot of money. It has held a lot better value than it would have done if it was a Range Rover. Now on that, I looked at a Range Rover recently. I bought this car six months ago, I've done 6,000 miles. The Range Rover Vogue, a 4.4 or a P400 or a 3 to V6, whatever they are, are around 40 to 45,000 pounds for like an SE with the same mileage, same year. That's almost 20,000 pounds less than, no, it's 25, but 20, 20,000 pounds less than this car was when I bought it. So what does that say? Did I say that Range Rovers are now brilliant value for money or have they just dropped their pants and they're not worth anything? Or is it saying that the Audi SQ7 is the unsung, the secret? The car that no one ever thinks about, but probably you should, who knows? Right, can I talk you through some negatives of the SQ7? Because there are some. Number one, the adaptive cruise control can sometimes just slam on its brakes whenever it feels like it. Also, when you're in the shortest distance setting on like a motorway, for some reason, the car can keep itself really, really close to someone. But if they slow down, and you slow down, when they speed back up again, the car in front, the car doesn't really seem to get back to where you want it to be. So I have to, I either leave a massive gap and someone cuts in and winds me up, or I have to accelerate again, which kind of defeats the purpose of adaptive cruise. The lane keeping assist, which the car has got, just sometimes just seems to drag you round the, round the road. I mean, it's just, sometimes it's just so kind of horrendous. I mean, it's just awful, but also it's useful. I do like it, but every so often it just pulls me from pillar to post, which I just hate. Other things, I do think the seats, although are brilliant and suit the SQ7 style, they could be a little bit more comfortable. They are a little bit harder. And when you get in and out, I'm worried this bolster is going to look horrendous in a couple of years and a couple of more thousand miles. It's just going to be a little bit, yeah, not great. But that's it. That's literally all I can find wrong with this car. Well, okay, there's, there's one thing. There's one thing. I had a Porsche Cayman before and I drove a KN before I bought this car. The KN was too expensive, I couldn't afford it, slash value for money, this is the obvious choice. But the Audi isn't as special. Like the, the car's brilliant, right? And it drives brilliantly well, and it's super comfortable and fast, and arguably far better than any Range Rover I would have bought. But it isn't special. I don't get in it and think, oh, I love this. I did with my Porsche. I had that kind of t that kind of tingle in the KN as well. So I'm uh, a, a family car. It's fantastic. And if you're not that worried about that sort of thing, it's brilliant. But if you are a bit of a car nut and you want that excitement, that kind of special feeling when you're getting in a car, it's not quite got it for me. It's not. But you know, we can't have it all sometimes. Right, the final launch before. Did you hear that? The, the, the traction control snuck in, my foot was hard down there, it just sat there waiting until I was straight and then it accelerated. That winds me up, actually, a lot. 
Didn't realize how much it wind me up, but it does. Anyway, let's head back because I'm gonna have a quick chat before we end the video. And so that is it. What do we think of my new daily driver, the Audi SQ7? I absolutely love this car. Yeah, I know it's not as wafty as a Range Rover. We all know that. It's not as sporty as an RS6, but if you're just looking at that little bit in between, say no more. I absolutely love this car. It's practical, it's fast, it's great looking, and it's actually more economical than I thought it might be. So I'm besotted by it. If you liked it, make sure to drop a comment below. What you think about the car? Would you have bought something else? Would you have gone for diesel? Or would you have perhaps gone for the petrol version? Also, subscribe to the channel because I'm going to do plenty of videos of this car, but also of a new sporty car that I have also added to the garage. But for now, I'll see you soon. I've got the time.